Getting started with StreamYard, this is the series for you. We're going to cover everything pertaining to the platform, but in this particular video, we're going to take a look at the dashboard. So how to set up and schedule a stream. And of course, that will include your teams, functions, setting up destinations, how much storage you have, and of course, some of the functionality underneath your library. If all that sounds good to you, you're in the right place. Let's dive in. So here we are on the dashboard and the only thing that you'd have to do um, in terms of actually setting this up for yourself is to go to StreamYard.com if you don't have an account and create an account. Once you create an account, you will see something similar to what you see on screen right now. You'll see uh, a dashboard. Now, I do have a reusable studio. I also have some test studios. And again, that is just for me. So if I go ahead and get rid of this one, no big deal there. If I get rid of this one, and again, just by showing that, you'll see how to get rid of uh, scheduled um, uh, streams and recordings. Uh, but then you also have your reusable studios. And we'll kind of go through all of the different things, starting at the on the left side of the screen, right? Right at the top, you've got the StreamYard logo. Uh, you've got your your teams. Now, if you don't have teams, right? If you don't have teams, you may not have anything in this option to actually look at. But if you do, you when you click on this, you'll see some of the teams that you'll be able to switch between. This is mine, but several of these are client projects that I'm able to go into and operate as them. So that's your teams feature. You have your library feature, and this is where previous recordings live. Um, you can actually go here and reschedule those streams. You can update the thumbnail. You can actually um, share them and you can download them from here as well. When you click on download, you can not only download the individual recordings, you can download the audio files as well as the transcript. So some robust functionality right there within your library and in the library is where if you click into a particular video now when you when you click the one that I clicked was my reusable studio so if I go back to the library you'll see here under my reusable studio how it all works you'll see there's eight episodes which is whereas all the rest of them are individual videos but this has several Video episodes inside this reusable studio and then inside there you have individual videos so that's an, a distinction to be uh, to consider when you're utilizing reusable studios which is one link that continues and it persists where or you're using a scheduled stream or scheduled recording which that link you will get a new one every time you schedule one so we if we go into any of these let's say this one incubator's couch I can not only play it and see what it looks like, I can generate AI clips from it as well. Um, and I can actually share it from directly from here. You can see it says edit and repurpose. You can share it from here to all these different destinations directly from the library. So all of that functionality is there inside the library. Destinations is kind of self-explanatory, but the setup process is where most people sometimes get hung up. You, this is where you will add your YouTube, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your Twitter, your Twitch, your Instagram, your Kick, um, and, and other platforms. If you have the RTMP <clears throat> details of uh, stream key and URL, you can add those right here as well. So something to be mindful of, okay, of course, is where am I streaming to? As you get set up, as you're acclimating yourself inside StreamYard platform, you're gonna wanna make sure you set up your destinations properly. Um, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, whichever one you're gonna be streaming to. And of course, you will need to set up additional destinations for, your, for StreamYard to post um, repurposed contents, maybe uh, some shorts and some reels that you've recorded inside the sis inside the, the studio, you will need to set those up here as well. So you have your streaming destinations and then you have your repurposed destinations. Something to consider there. Um, then members, um, members is uh, pretty cool. You uh, can add members in. I have two seats remaining. Um, you can you can basically bring people in, have them 
um, help you to work with your stream. You have admin as a, a role and co-host as a role and admin can pretty much create a stream, do all the things that you can do. Um, whereas your, your, your co-host can only do, uh, what you are doing inside the studio. And we'll get to that in a later video, but inside the studio, you can add comments, you can add people to the stage, th different things like that. Co-hosts can operate inside of a studio, especially when it's live or when you're recording, but co-hosts can't necessarily do anything outside of the studio. So keep that in mind as a, as a distinction as you, as you do work with your teams. Um, down the side here, you do have referrals, and I, I, I definitely encourage you to refer people if you like the platform definitely use that referral functionality um it, it's it, it's an affiliate process a program and definitely something to read up on you've got team settings and this is the name of my team and um billing some other in integrations for their webinar platform called on air and then you have system status and i do like checking this from time to time it just kind of shows you know, how StreamYard is doing, if it's up or if it's down. Then you also have storage here on the very bottom. You can see I've used 13.3 hours of 50. You, that is always on your dashboard. So you always want to make sure you kind of just glance down there and make sure that it's not red or yellow, that you're not running out of space. Um, because if you run out of space, you can't record. <clears throat> Even when you're streaming, you are still recording to your uh, system. And that's where coming into the library can be critical to go through and delete some things that you no longer need. So that's navigating. Um, on this top side here on the right, you have something that says my account. And yeah, my account has referrals, team settings, billing, several other things. You can switch to light or dark mode right here underneath your account. You have the help center, partner resources, terms of service, privacy policy, and you can actually log out. But the thing that I always share with people, apart from just the switch to light, light mode and dark mode, the thing I always share with people is the news tab. When you go to the news tab, that is where you'll find latest updates, functions, and features from StreamYard. And so you can see here, they've got the iOS, local recordings now available on iOS, uh, stream from your favorite mobile browser. You have new destination alert with Kik. Um, you've got, you know, several of the, whatever their latest functions and features, and this is continually updated, whatever their latest functions and features, or if there's an announcement or improvement, they have that information right here for you in their news tab. So that is also something that I find to be very useful. There's three different ways to create here inside of StreamYard. You can go live, right? If I click this button here, you'll see that it'll say, hey, do you wanna go live stu in the studio or do you wanna do pre-recorded? And that's, you have some options there. Um, you can also decide whether or not you want to create a reusable studio. And as it's defined, um, you can see here if I hover over this question mark, and that's another thing to acclimate yourself with inside StreamYard is that anytime you see a question mark, there may be some additional information available if you, if you hover over it. And so what this does adds a shortcut to the dashboard so you can easily reuse the studio for broadcast as many times as you like. And as I mentioned before, uh, there is a, a, you know, a couple of different use cases for reusable studios. These are all my destinations that I have, uh, I have, I have available to me, but you can create a live stream that is just for recording. And so you don't necessarily select a destination. So I'm, uh, you know, you, there is also the recording feature as well. So you, you, one could just click on the recording one, but if you ever wanted to get in there, uh, let's say, let's just do a Kirk Nugent here because we're going to do test and test it's just as if I'm streaming to my YouTube channel. I'm going to put this as unlisted because I don't want you guys to be notified. And, uh, we're going to say create live stream, right? And what that does, it now creates a studio, a one, a one off studio. And when you create that one off studio, it's going to actually take you into the studio immediately. I right, click and click enter studio probably should have held off there just a little bit longer. But in our next video, we're going to be looking at uh, understanding the studio that may actually have to be broken into two parts. Uh, so make sure you're subscribed for that. But 
understanding the studios where we'll kind of go through the process of going into the studio and doing some of the things that are there. But he, he, here the idea, the understanding on the dashboard is now that I've created this studio, you'll see that it is down here under streams and recordings. You have this test uh, stream already scheduled to go to my YouTube channel. I can click on the three dots, go back to this and click edit and remove the destination. Right. So once I remove the destination, it says, hey, hey, post was created on YouTube for this. Do you want to delete it? I'm going to say yes and click remove. And now I can just save the changes. And guess what? That studio is still there. It just doesn't have any destinations associated with it. If I want, I can come to this studio and say edit and edit the destinations. Um, this is the same as clicking here to go to record. When you go to record, however, you do have some more functionality whether you want to record audio and video, whether you want it to be local, meaning lo recording locally on your computer and then uploading after the fact. If you got a guest or even yourself where the internet connection is a little bit spotty and it, the connection is causing the audio and video to stutter a little bit, sometimes um, being able to go into uh, the the local selecting local recording can give you a, a good clean recording of each one of the cameras in the studio after the fact. Of course, it doesn't have any um, graphics or anything on it, but this is an option that you could easily select that would give you added um, flexibility uh, without the need for high speed Internet. So uh, definitely something that to consider. And again, you've got that question mark there. You can hover over it and you can see a little bit more information about it. And again, we could just do test recording <clears throat> and say create. And it, it creates the test recording. Now it's going to be in that bottom section, just like the test stream was. And now you'll see here it's saying, hey, we're ready to enter the studio. And you have the ability to mute your mic, stop your camera or go to settings and determine what camera you're selecting. I've got a number of cameras or uh, what your resolution will be. I can actually select 4K. Um, yes. All right. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Um, okay, boom, good. So then we can also go to general and we can change some things here as well. Um, landscape and, or portrait. If you want to stream in those different types of orientations, um, shift videos up and down. You also have light and dark mode option here under general, um, cameras. So we can select that audio. We can select our, our audio information here as well. Whether or not you want to do a virtual background, you can do that right here. I have a green screen and that will give you a little bit more options. Um, and you can also select what your recording style will be, whether you're recording locally, whether you're recording video, is a combined or your recording video combined as well as an audio track. So some of these things would be really cool to, to set up. Um, and again, you also have hotkeys more on that in a subsequent video. Then you could click once everything is set, you can click on enter. You can see here that I've selected uh, vertical. And so in this instance, if I wanted to change it back, I would just go into general and click back to landscape. And once I've done that, you can see that that has adjusted here. But I can go back to my dashboard, um, the, hence the name of this video, and you have your test recording here, and we have test. Probably should have just called it test stream, right? So test live stream, right? Now we've got test live stream, and we've got test recording right here on the dashboard. And you also have your reusable studio. The third option for creating with StreamYard is an option called on air webinar. And on, on air, on air, StreamYard on air is their webinar functionality. Instead of streaming to a destination, you're streaming completely self-contained inside StreamYard. This is, this is actually a game changer feature, right? Because um, especially with some of the changes with Facebook, uh, where you can't necessarily stream into uh, Facebook groups anymore, at least not in a direct fashion where you're getting comments. Um, and then sometimes when you're streaming, if you're especially if you're trying to teach, if you really want to engage an audience captively, you want them kind of off platform, right? You don't want to be on Twitter. You don't want to be Instagram. You want to be on YouTube where there are ads and other things that are popping up that are pulling from their attention being able to stream to a direct platform. This is why Zoom is, is so, such a preferred platform for webinars because it is self-contained. Well, StreamYard has its own webinar platform as well. 
it is not as feature rich as Zoom, but it does give you the functionality and allows you a sign up page. It allows users to engage in the comment section. You can bring their comments on screen. You can even bring uh, attendees into your show, right? You can bring them into a webinar and utilize it that way as well. So definitely something to consider uh, if you're looking at webinars, uh, if you're looking at this this platform, StreamYard as a platform that may be able to replace several pieces for you. You can schedule everything here. You can have, uh, you know, on air, you have your, your limits depending on what your plat uh, subscription level is for StreamYard. And they register, they come into the system, they're able to attend. So those are the three ways to create with StreamYard. And that actually covers the entire uh, dashboard in this system. Uh, this the, the, the key thing to know about the dashboard, the key thing, the critical thing to take away is this is your main hub. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just like as if you were driving, you have this dashboard with your gauges. It's letting you know how things are functioning and operating where things are um, and, and what mode you are in. That's your dashboard. And so I like to kind of start right there, help people to know here's how you set up your destinations. Here's where your library of videos are going to be. Here's how you set up members. Um, here's how you create a stream, how you set up a recording, how you utilize webinars. All of those functions and features are here on the dashboard. But the, the, the next thing to note, of course, is to go into the studio while the dashboard is good, right? Right. You see everything on the dashboard while you're driving, but you've got to go ahead and grab that steering wheel. Right. And so in the next video, we, we in this series of videos, we'll be talking about understanding the studio, understanding the StreamYard studio. And we'll look at all the tabs, all the settings, and we'll even go live. I hope to see you in the next one.